Well, I can definitely say this has been one of the most frustrating stops on my road trip so far. As you can see, this entire section here around James Polk's final resting place is under construction. I couldn't even get here. The walkway, I think, is here. But you can see everything is completely a mess. Look at this. And I can see why, from what I read, this the final resting place doesn't get a lot of visitors. It's sort of buried back here behind the Tennessee State Capitol building. It's not easy to find. I walked all over the place trying to find it. And then, of course, with the construction, that made it even more difficult. But even without the construction, it's really not evident that it's even back here. There is a plaque on the very front as you're walking up to the Capitol that says that they are laid to rest here. So that's helpful. I spent the night in Murfreesboro which is only about a half hour south of Nashville. So I thought it would be pretty easy to get here this morning, even though it's a Tuesday morning, I knew there'd be rush hour traffic. Then my GPS, I got lost. It took me in the wrong direction. It was trying to take a shortcut and it ended up being twice as long. And it took me about an hour and a half to get here with the rush hour traffic. And, but that wasn't the worst part. I got here and I've been driving around for about an hour, over an hour, trying to find parking. So just be aware that if you are coming to visit yourself, parking in downtown Nashville is not easy. In fact, I ended up parking where I parked a couple years ago when I was here, which is down by the Country Music Walk of Fame, uh, south of Broadway, you know, with the strip where all the music is and where all the bars are. And I like to walk, so it was fine. It's a couple mile walk from there. But around here, within the mile area, I wasn't able to find any parking. There are some parking lots, but two of them wouldn't take my card, saying my card was not valid. And one of them, I was there, and then it just wouldn't take the card, and there was no other option to pay. So I had to back up, and there were 25 cars behind me, so everybody had to back up. It was a nightmare. And I'm sure they were thinking, I'm thinking, you know, this old geezer can't figure out how to use the, the self-pay parking <laughs> thing. And, you know, probably true. So I finally got out of there, and then I went into another place where you had to scan a barcode which I scan and then it came out and says $50 for the day well I'm only gonna be here for a couple of hours so I didn't want to spend $50 for parking so I left there and I went into another place same thing $50 for the day finally I remembered that I had parked just in the public parking area down by the Walk of Fame a couple of years ago so I went there so who knew that parking would be the most frustrating part of this road trip trying to find parking in downtown areas. So just a heads up, if you are planning to come here, allow plenty of extra time to try to find parking. Hopefully it won't be more than $30 for my two hours of walking here to James Polk's final resting place that I almost didn't get to see because I couldn't find a way to even get in here. They've got it all fenced off and I had to walk through the mud to get here. But I'm assuming this is just temporarily like this. Now, one of the interesting things about James Polk as president this gravesite is his third gravesite here, and as far as I know, he's the only U.S. president whose grave or whose body has been dug up and moved, reburied three times, and this may not be the last time. In 2017, they were discussing moving it once again to, I guess, Columbia, Tennessee. Apparently in 2018 they did take a vote because family members or descendants of Polk, they were in disagreement. They were fighting, of course, among each other. Half of the family wanted him relocated, half of the family wanted him to remain here. And I guess the family members that were descendants who wanted him to remain here won out by one vote. So for right now, he's here at the State Capitol building in Nashville, but it's very possible that in the future he could be relocated for a fourth time back to Columbia, where I guess most of his family is, and I guess they felt he would get more visitors there. And I, I agree, I mean, this is such a remote area back here, and no one probably even knows that he's here. It's a little strange. I mean, it's kind of nice that he's here at the Capitol building, but one of the articles said something about the family being able to make money if they moved him and the town of Columbia being able to make, make money having him there because it would be a tourist draw, a tourist attraction, and it probably would. But right now, this is where he is, and apparently, from what I've read, he doesn't get a lot of visitors, so I wanted to visit for sure. And hopefully some of you will come to visit, and all of the construction will be done, and maybe it'll be really nice here.
and a nice place to visit, which right now is not all that great. Oh, and in case you're wondering why his body and his gravesite was moved three times after he left the White House, he moved here to Tennessee, but died shortly after, and I believe it was from cholera, dysentery, and at the time, cholera, I think they probably didn't really know what caused it, and they wanted to make sure that it didn't infect anyone else. And, and to prevent the spread, I guess if you had cholera back then, they buried you immediately. So he was buried within a couple of days at the Nashville National Military Cemetery that I visited the last time I was here. And he was there for a number of years. And then, the, I don't know if it was his family or who, but someone moved him then to Pope Place, which was his home. And then years later, I guess the family again, there was a dispute about who owned the family or they wanted to sell it. And they finally all got permission to sell the house and they had to move the grave. So they moved it here for his third interment. And then if they ever are successful in moving him a fourth time, then his fourth final resting place will be in Colombia. But for now, he's here and the move didn't get approved. So maybe he's here to stay. And for those of you who are like me and enjoy learning facts and trivia about the presidents, Polk apparently was kind of a party pooper in the White House. Apparently he banned booze, card playing, and dancing in the White House when he was in office. This was back in the 1800s, and I guess card playing and dancing were not to his liking. I can't imagine what would have happened if he were president during Prohibition. So as you can see, he was president of the U.S., born November 2nd, 1795 died June 15th 1849 and they don't say where he was born let's see does it say here the mortal remains of James Knox Polk are resting in the vault beneath he was born in Mecklenburg County North Carolina and immigrated with his father Samuel Polk to Tennessee in 1806 the beauty of virtue was illustrated in his life the excellence of Christianity was exemplified in his death Sarah Childers, wife of James Knox Polk, 1803-1891. This week I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my latest channel supporters, Judy Woodruff and Dana Pretzer. Thank you once again, Judy and Dana, for your very kind and very generous donations to my channel using YouTube Super Thanks and also PayPal. They're very appreciated. As always, thanks for joining me on this road trip to the past. And until our next trip together to the cemetery, Thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.